Uh, it's 6.30 now, so uh, yeah, uh, I guess I'll just start now then. All right, so hi everyone. Uh, welcome to Hacker Tools. So today uh, it's on LaTeX. So uh, this is actually part of the series Hacker Tools. Uh, so we're NUS hackers. Uh, we are an interest group in NUS uh, that's dedicated about uh, dedicated on spreading the hacker culture. So we do this by uh, carrying out a few activities. So uh, like the one you're attending right now is Hacker Tools, uh, which is trying to uh, hold workshops and try to teach about uh, tools that are used by hackers to make your life more productive. Uh, we also have other activities. So we have Friday Hacks every Friday where we invite speakers from the academia or from the industry to give a talk. We also have Hacker School, which happens every Saturday uh, where we try to teach to uh, try to teach technical topics to beginners, and we also have Hack and Roll, which is our annual hackathon. So, uh, if you're interested to join our hackathon, do keep a lookout because it usually happens in January. So, I'm Julius. Uh, I can check out my GitHub page there. So, I'm currently in year four. Uh, I love hacking and building systems, and uh, yeah, I also enjoy a couple of other things like space exploration. Uh, so, yeah, hit me up if you like that as well. So uh, as mentioned in the announcement, uh, preferably you have these things. So uh, you have a tech distribution uh, that we uh, give the instruction how to install to you in the uh, channel, but, and also tech studio, which is just to um, make things easier to standardize for everyone. You don't have to use this if you've used, if you want to use some other things, but uh, just to make it easier, uh, we're standardizing on this. Uh, if you are unable to install somehow, you can just use Overleaf. So you can use overleaf.com and then uh, you can follow along. Uh, Overleaf is basically kind of like the Google Docs for LaTeX. So you can type your LaTeX there and then you can compile it and it would output the PDF for you. Uh, yep. So if you open your text studio, it should show up this screen. So uh, if you got to this screen in your text studio, then I think you should be good, hopefully. Yeah, uh, if at any point, any of you have any question, feel free to just uh, write something on the chat or uh, you can unmute yourself and like uh, speak up. And uh, we also have Huawei who would be helping out with answering the questions. So yeah, feel free to uh, stop me at any point in time if you have any question. All right, so uh, first of all, what is LaTeX? So LaTeX is a markup language for document preparation. So it's kind of similar to HTML, except that HTML is used for the web, but LaTeX is usually used for documents. Uh, and, and compared to most, uh, what you see is what you get editors such as Microsoft Word. LaTeX actually uses uh, plain text and it actually started as a writing tool for mathematicians and computer scientists. So uh, this is actually built on top of something that is called tech. Uh, and uh, LaTeX is actually a set of macros. Uh, it's not too important, but uh, it's actually kind of old. So La the, first, the very first version of LaTeX was actually released in 1983. So it's a very old thing. And the good thing about LaTeX is that it uses plain text. So if you know Git, you can use Git to actually version control your uh, LaTeX source code so that you can have uh, you can definitely revert as opposed to Word where you can't really undo after uh, after a while. So tech itself, which is the system that LaTeX builds on, is actually a typesetting system. So it's really meant to uh, write books and write documents. It's written by Donald Knopf. So uh, he's definitely like one of the top computer scientists out there. And uh, he actually made this fun fact is because he's disappointed with his second edition of his book, which is The Art of Computer Programming, TAOCP. So he wrote tech with two goals in mind, which is to allow anybody to produce like high quality books. And it would give exactly the same results on all computers. So as opposed to Word, when you save your file and then someone opens it on another computer, uh, it, would, it might look different, but not the same thing with tech or LaTeX document, which is like every time you compile it, it should output the same thing. Well, most of the times, at least that's the, an explicit goal of the system. And some trivia, so the version number of tech actually approaches Pi. So right now we're at version 3.141.59265. So like this is gonna get longer. And we also have 
the version above metaphone, which approaches E. So metaphone is actually, uh, it's a companion to text. So it's actually used to uh, define fonts. So if you use, if you've seen some documents, you might see uh, them typeset in this font called computer modern. And that font is actually generated using metaphone. So you can use LaTeX for a bunch of things. You can use it to write reports. You can use it to uh, write books like what Donald Nuff did. And you can even use it to write presentations such as this one. So uh, this slice that you're seeing right now is actually written in LaTeX using uh, a package called Beamer. Okay. Uh, so, okay, if at this point in time, any of you have any question, feel free to just write in the chat or... Uh, yeah, not through a lot of things. He probably did write a search algorithm. Yeah, uh, if any of you have any questions, just write on the chat. Okay, so uh, the basic syntax of LaTeX. So a LaTeX document consists of commands and environments. So if you know HTML, this is kind of similar. Uh, a command is kind of similar to text. And then text that can have children in its environment. And the syntax for it is actually this thing. So uh, it begins with a backslash. Notice that it's a backslash and not a slash. And then you can type in the command. So this is kind of like the tag. And then you can have some optional uh, parameters. So you can omit this part because it's optional. And then after it takes in a couple of arguments. And if you're using an environment instead, which can have many children, then you use uh, the command begin and end as the marker of like, well, the environment begins and ends. Environment would contain the environment itself. And then uh, in between beginning and end, you can actually put your content, or, uh, like the children that you want. And in LaTeX, comments come after the percent sign. So uh, all of this looks a bit abstract, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go through some examples later on. So this is the very basic of LaTeX documents. So like, like in HTML, you have like the basic HTML document. In LaTeX, you also have this thing that's like the simplest thing. Uh, so if all of you would just copy and paste this into Tech Studio, uh, you would actually get a document that just says hello world. So we'll explain uh, what each of these things are doing, but if you have your uh, your Tech Studio open, you can just uh, copy paste that. So it might not look good, but uh, yeah. So if you do this and then uh, you press this green button that looks like play, so that pattern in text today is just to compile your document. So uh, if you are able to see down here, it says process exit normally. So that means that everything, uh, LaTeX uh, La was able to compile this document correctly. If there's some kind of errors, then LaTeX would actually like put it down here. So for example, if I put like a slash here, that's definitely a syntax error. Then I press run and then you would see the error show up, shows up down there. So if I go back and make this compile again, now, it, you, you can see that it's compiled successfully, but if you want to see the recent document, you can use this button with the magnifying glass, then you'll be able to see the document. So this is a document which just contains hello world. Oops, yeah. Yeah, hello world. So, yep. So hopefully everyone is able to get here. If you are, if you have any difficulties, feel free to just uh, write in the chat, just to make sure you're here. If you use Overleaf, this should also work uh, out of the box. Okay, uh, I mean, this is kind of simple. I'm just gonna go ahead. If you have any question, just uh, write something in the chat and uh, either how or I will answer your question. So uh, something to notice, uh, something to note about LaTeX is that it treats all white space characters as space. And all this, if you have like some consecutive spaces, they would all be collapsed and treated as just one space. If you have any leading or trailing spaces, then they would just get ignored. Uh, if you actually press enter one, so it's a single line break, it's also treated as a space. It will only treat it as a new paragraph if you do two or more line breaks. So as an example, uh, you have this thing. So, okay, let's see. Uh, yep. uh, so we have this document. So as you can see, 
uh, you have like a lot of spaces here, but it doesn't matter to LaTeX. And you can see that there's a line break also from whether you enter, there's a line break. LaTeX would actually uh, get them together. So if I copy paste that, so you can see that here we actually have a uh, leading space. And here we have several spaces here. And we even have line breaks in between lines. Uh, so if I compile this, oops, if I compile this, you can see that actually LaTeX just uh, treat them as one whole thing. They don't actually uh, follow like whether you press enter, you don't press enter. Uh, yeah, so uh, you can see that uh, even when you put several spaces, you can see here that actually uh, all the many spaces are collapsed into just one. Okay, hopefully everyone uh, are on the same page here. So you can see how uh, LaTeX treats space here. Yes, like I said earlier, process exit normally means that everything's good. If you see something, if you see press exit normally, then that's good. All right. LaTeX also have some reserved characters, which means that you can't use them directly. So if you want to type uh, like a hash sign or a dollar sign or a percent sign, then you actually can't use them directly because either because uh, they have special meaning. So for example, you know that percent has a special meaning, which is to start a comment or like the braces also have special meaning, which is like the delimiter for a command uh, and or a backslash, which is like how you begin a command, right? So you can use this. So instead you have to actually, uh, you have to escape them by using a backslash. Uh, so it might look a bit weird that like, so, like I say that they might be unavailable in all fonts of LaTeX. And the reason for this is because LaTeX is actually a very, very old system. It's used from the 70s, 80s, where like there wasn't such thing as like open type fonts or like any kind of like modern standard of fonts. So uh, yeah, just take it as it is. And you should notice that actually, like for example, uh, the caret sign, actually it looks like command, right? So it has a backslash and then the command name is uh, the caret sign. And then you have this like empty argument. And the reason for this is because they are actually usually used to create diacritics. So if I, oops. So if I do E and then diacritic, is it this? I can't remember, I've used it for a long time. Oops, uh, yeah. So if I do this, then what happens is that it would, they would actually put a cap on the E. So uh, you can see here, uh, e is used for diacritic. So if you actually want just a caret sign, then you have to actually provide, uh, you have to call the caret as a command. And then only then if you do that, they would be treated correctly as its own character. Because if you don't, it would just treat it as a diacritic. Same thing as tilde. So if I just use uh, backslash tilde and then I compile it, it actually becomes a diacritic. So if you want the actual tilde character, you have to make it a command and use the braces here. Now it's treating it correctly. Uh, at this point, hopefully everyone is able to follow along. Oh, and then another, another special thing is also we use uh, text backslash to create backslash instead of like double backslash. And the reason is because in LaTeX, double backslash means line breaks. So for example, if here I put two backslashes and then I press run, you can see that it would actually uh, put a line break after you and before enter. And because of this, if you if what you actually want is an actual backslash, you use this command text backslash. And if you run it. And then, uh, yeah, you would have a backslash. Uh, there's no reason for you to want a multiple space, right? So, uh, okay, so uh, there's a question, how about multiple spaces? So, uh, I mean, 
I'm not sure. I think you can do backslash space, backslash space, and this should provide it. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it does. So you can use like backslash space and then they would escape the space so that you wouldn't collapse it to just one space. But like most times you don't want to do this. Like there's no special reason for to do this, right? Uh, I'll, I'll go through later on if you are writing code because sometimes you want to keep the space, like the correct number of spaces in code. But uh, for the purpose of writing like English sentences, you don't actually want several spaces. So yeah, back then, yeah. But yeah, if you want to, you can use backslash space. So like backslash can be used to actually escape a couple of other things. Some other tricky characters are the larger than and smaller than symbols. So usually they don't get rendered correctly. So I'm not sure in this thing, does it? It doesn't, right? It gets like this uh, back, like upside down question mark. Uh, so you should actually use uh, text less and text greater. So like some additional command. Uh, yep, there are also, okay. So if you are entering, text that contains a square bracket, uh, sometimes it would fail because uh, LaTeX would actually pass this as uh, having uh, having options, like optional arguments. So you say what you can do is you can do command and you can put this thing, like the empty thing. Yeah, how we, okay, so uh, in case you're not aware, how we just posted a stack exchange post on like what kind of other spaces that uh, LaTeX has. So like there's like backslash comma, backslash quad and like a couple of other things. So if you want wider spaces, you should use those instead if you want, instead of like spamming backslash space, backslash space. Okay, uh, yeah, hopefully everyone's good. If you don't just uh, post in the chat. And similar to other programming languages, LaTeX has packages as well. And it has, it has its own package manager, which is called C10. Uh, in order to import a package, you use this command called use package. Uh, so we'll go through some useful packages in the subsections uh, after we go through like the basic, the other basic stuffs. So the very first thing in our example, we have this thing called a document class, right? Which is what we're going to go through now. So in this command document class article, we say that we want to use the article document class so a document class is actually uh, what defines the formatting uh, standard that they would actually use, uh, the LaTeX document would actually use. So the whole idea behind LaTeX is that you would, you, you, uh, they want to separate the content from the styling. So the styles are allocated in document class, and then your LaTeX file will only contain like the content. So uh, in this case, we're using article, but there are also like a couple of other document classes. So for example, if you want to make some uh, publication for some journal, usually they have their own thing. So for ACM, they have ACM art. Or for this presentation, for example, uh, I'm actually using Beamer. Uh, you, they also have document class book, uh, which is uh, what they use to write books, for example. Uh, there are also some options here. So uh, you can specify 10 point or 11 point or 12 point, which is the sign of, size of the main font. So for example, here, I think by default is 10 points. So if I want to make it bigger, I can go uh, make it 12 point, for example. So if I recompile that, then you can see that it will get bigger, right? Uh, if, and then, uh, so I think, I'm not sure. I think by default, this is A4 size. So it might differ on your system, but uh, say I want it to be letter size, then I can use letter paper option. So uh, to give an additional option, you can just use the comma and then you give like the other option. So for example, if I want letter paper, I can just write that. And then it change, is it, is it really letter? Maybe letter. I guess if I do A4 paper, paper. Mm, okay. Uh, okay, not sure. Uh, Tech Studio is a German thing, so that might, be why it's giving me A4. But anyway, uh, in Singapore context, you should already get A4. If you don't, you can just like uh, give A4 paper here and it should compile the A4 paper. You can also uh, provide landscape. So uh, if I put landscape here, 
then it should change the result into a landscape. Okay, hold on. Okay, come on, let me save this. this document save. Okay, compile. Okay, I haven't used this in a long time. Let's see the resulting document. Okay, but anyway, uh, if you, uh, if you open the link that I sent, you should be able to see that uh, additional options. So let me just open. Yep. So uh, in the link that is in the slide, you can see that there are actually like a couple of uh different document classes and like. Uh, different kinds of options that you can give to document class and uh, using this you should be able to okay i'm not quite sure why this doesn't work but uh yeah it should it should work it seems that it's not resizing the paper correctly let me see i changed the okay let's change this Okay, uh, I'm not quite sure. I'll, uh, but anyway, most times what you need is that if you have any kind of weird thing happening in your tech document, you can always just go to Google and like uh, Google it. But for the interest of time, uh, I'm not going to do it right now. And then uh, if you see here, you have the document class command, and after that, you have an environment, which is document environment because we have the begin and the end and they have child, which is the text. Uh, so the beginning of the document environment is this begin document. And this tells LaTeX that the content document starts here. Anything that comes before the begin document line is called the preamble. And then end document means it's the end of the document environment. And this tells LaTeX the document is complete. So whatever comes after that is usually ignored. Uh, and the preamble is kind of important because we can define some other things here. So uh, we have this thing called the top matter, which is the information about the document itself. So uh, the, usually we use the preamble to define this thing. So it doesn't have to be in the preamble, but uh, for convention, we usually put it in the, uh, in the preamble just to be neater so that whatever comes in the begin document is whatever is going to be inside the document. So uh, okay, so let's use this example. So title, author, date. Yep, so this is like a very basic top matter. So uh, I, I give it some title and then for the author, I just put my name and then for date, I'm using today's date. And then in a document, if I put, if I use this command called make title, it would actually uh, render this as uh, the top part of the document. So if I compile that and yep. So yeah, as you can see here, uh, we've just, it, it just turned this title, how to basic the author and the date into the document and it's all uh, typeset properly as a title. And you can see LaTeX actually has a special type setting. So, uh, whenever you see LaTeX, actually it's just a comma in LaTeX and it will automatically type set the LaTeX thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, if anyone has any question, again, like feel free to just uh, ask away in the chat. So, this top thing is called the top matter in case you need to like search about like, uh, some things that doesn't quite work for you, uh, you can always search and the keyword is top matter for the, that top part. The next important part for documents would be sections. So uh, LaTeX provides some kind of like hierarchical sections. So you have section, subsection, and sub subsection. Uh, so if I just use this thing and put it here, uh, oops, okay, let's enter, enter here. So let's say I put this here and then there's a subsection. So if I compile this, then you should be able to see that LaTeX will automatically put some section title, subsection, and like they would actually uh, provide like the, uh, the, the, the correct typesetting rules. So for example, like 
the spacing between sections, uh, section titles and whatnot. And uh, you can observe also that LaTeX would actually uh, numbers the section automatically for you. So if here I create another section, like another section, for example, and then I compile it, you can see that LaTeX will automatically give it uh, a, 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 a number automatically. And if you don't actually want the numbering, you can use the command followed by a star. So if I put a star here, then you can see that actually another section would lose its numbering. And this is the same thing for subsection and sub subsection. If I put this, then they would lose their numbering. Yep. And there's also a table of contents later on. So uh, go back to this part, uh, just go back to this part and like use this command if you, uh, if you want the unnumbered sections to actually be included in the table of contents, because by default, if you don't number them, then they won't be added to the table of contents. Oh, did I mention how to make table of contents? I didn't. So, okay, uh, in the interest, okay. So uh, the command to make, to, to type set a table of contents is called table of contents. So if I do that and then I run it, then you can see that table of contents uh, would appear there. So if I number the, all of this, uh, if all of these were numbered, then all of them should appear, or at least up to a certain uh, number. Okay, let me recompile this. Let me take some. Yep. So uh, you can see here that actually LaTeX would actually typeset for you the uh, like a contents table. So if the page actually goes to goes all the way down to uh say uh, this thing is very long and you actually get so okay so let's do that so say i just have like a lot of sections and they all goes to the second page or the third page then uh, latex would actually yep so you can see that actually uh these things are in the second page so you can see that uh, like they open a second page whereas the content page is on the first page okay the pages are uh, so LaTeX actually has like several passes uh, when they try to read the file and read the content. So like the contents page is kind of meta, right? Like it's trying to find the, num the page number for uh, a page number for like the current page. So if you notice that a table of content is not like giving you something that's proper, then uh, just like compile it a few times, that should work. I think you won't get this in Overleaf. Uh, and it's possible to actually use something else called LaTeX MK, for example, to actually uh, get this to run. It's kind of a quirk of uh, tech here that sometimes you need several, you need to run it several times for it to actually work in terms of like uh, references and like numbering pages. Yep. Okay. So uh, some people, like someone is asking whether there's anything deeper than sub subsection. So yeah, there's a couple of, uh, there, there are packages and stuff like that that can do it for you. So uh, in this case, so for example, if I, okay, let, let's remove this. So let's say I have this subsection that is not titled, right? So if I compile this, okay, let's do it one more time. Some subsection title, right? So some sub, so uh, the sub subsection appears, but the subsection does not. And say you actually don't want it to be numbered, but you actually want it to still appear in the TOC, then uh, you can actually uh, add this here. So uh, this means you are manually actually you are actually manually adding to the TOC. So you have to like copy paste stuff. So like it, it's not really pleasant. And anyway, in most cases, you actually want numbers in your. Uh, in your section and subsection titles. So if I do that, then yeah, it should appear now. Okay, perfect. If you have any question, just uh, write in the chat or like unmute yourself and uh, ask us away. Okay, next part would be uh, how you would customize how your text looks like. So. There is this uh, emphasizing text, which you can use this command like emph. So, uh, okay, I, I can do this to the 
first section. So if I do EMPH and, and then I cover the whole of the first paragraph, then you can see it's being italicized. So that's usually how uh, it's being implemented. But this command is actually dynamic. So if I'm already inside an emphasized text and I emphasize something else, so for example, I want to emphasize not, then actually in the not will become straight again, oops. Yep, the not will become straight again. So it's kind of dynamic. So like if you're emphasizing something inside, something that's emphasized, then it would actually try to emphasize it by giving a different formatting. So this thing is actually quite recursive in a way. So if you do this and then you put here, and then I have another emphasize on matter. Oops. Then you can see that. Yep, you can see that uh, not matter whether you, so the not whether you would become straight and then matter there's emphasis inside of emphasize, instead of emphasize text, then it would like actually just like switch with it uh, to whether italic or regular. If you want postscript, why do you want postscript? Anyway, uh, usually text studio by default uses text to, uh, uses PDF LaTeX, which has the output of PDF. Uh, I don't know, why, why would you want? Anyway, if you want postscript, why do you want postscript? If you want to just use PDF to PS, there's a package, there's like a Linux package for that. And then there's uh, a couple of font styles. So uh, text normal is just like the normal font. There's the emphasized one. There's monospace, which is text TT for teletype. There's BF for boldface, SC for small capitals, and then there's uppercase for like just making everything uppercase. So let's see. All right, let's put it down here. Boom, oops. Yep, so if I run this. Uh, so different between text IT and EMPH. So text IT would just italicize everything, but EMPH would actually, it's a semantic thing. So like I said just now, so like if uh, if you have an emphasized text inside an emphasized text, it would actually turn the italic text back into upright position again. If you just use text IT, then like no matter how many text IT you put, they would all be italic because that's uh, a presentation thing instead of like a semantic thing. Okay, and then let's give, let's put them all in their own paragraphs so that you can see clearly. Yep, so uh, text normal is just like your normal text. So if you don't do anything, it should just look like as if you put a text normal. You have EMPH, which is the emphasized text. You have text TT for teletype, which is monospace. You have bold, you have small capitals, and you have uppercase. So no matter what you put inside the uppercase, they would all be turned into uppercase. Small capitals as like what is it? So like everything looks like capital except that the actual capital would look larger than the non-capital. You can also change the font size, but note that uh, these sizes are actually in scope. So in order for you to create a new scope, you uh, separate them by using braces. So uh, whatever you have here. So for example, if uh, I put Okay, let's put here, put here. Okay, so yeah, so now I have like a couple of text. So if I put backslash tiny, uh, say all the way here, ah, at the second section, tiny, oops, tiny, then it would actually affect the rest of the section. So uh, what happens here is that for LaTeX, uh, font sizes actually affect the whole scope. And in this case, the whole scope is whatever comes after tiny. So if you want to separate uh, the scopes, you can just use like open brace, close, close brace. So for example, I want this to only affect an empty line, then I can do this. So that an empty line will be in its own scope. So the rest would not get affected. So if I do this and I recompile, 
you can see that only an empty line is actually affected by tiny. And they are basically like uh, different kinds of uh, size commands. And what I provide here is actually in order of increasing. So tiny is the smallest one. Normal size is like whatever you normally see and you can have like some larger ones and some smaller ones. Okay, if everything's still good, I'm gonna continue here. Sometimes you also want non-breaking space. Uh, so for example, here you see spaces after a word. Say for example, you don't want a word to get broken up. So you don't want this space here after a word. So if you want a space after a to uh, be turned into a line break, you can use a tilde in order to tell LaTeX that this is a non-line break, like a non-breaking space. Do not put a line break here. So if I change it to a tilde and recompile, you can see that a word is then turned into like one own one thing. So you notice here that actually LaTeX uh, put word below originally, but now it puts it all in one line. And the reason for this is because uh, LaTeX actually has some like kind of like complicated uh, algorithm on how you should put, where you should put line breaks. So if you notice in LaTeX document later on, you can see that actually LaTeX might even break words uh, and it put dash for you so that it doesn't look horrible uh, because of a line that's too long or too small because by default, LaTeX would try to make everything justified. So if I, uh, it's because of, okay, so, but if you could fit in the same line all the while, why did it have to line break? So this is the algorithm that LaTeX used. So I'm not familiar with the algorithm that you use, but I know that it's not as simple as like, try to fit everything in one line. Uh, LaTeX is built as a typesetting thing. So uh, there's a couple of other considerations besides of like as many things in one line as possible. I think if you uh, look it up online, you should be able to see like uh, what kind of, like how, how LaTeX algorithm actually works in terms of like making a line break. Okay, like you don't see it here, but sometimes you can see that LaTeX would actually break up the word even uh, if the word is very long and then uh, it would actually break it in the correct place and put a dash there. So uh, for controlling line spacing, I usually use the set space package. So this is like, like what I say in the beginning, so you can import a package. So they have some commands like single spacing, single spacing, uh, one half spacing, double spacing. Uh, they also have environments. So in case you want this to apply to only like some text and not others, then you can use actually uh, this like spacing environment or like each of this thing. So uh, let's use this. So if I put this here, so Okay, so uh, first of all, you would notice that if I don't import a package and I try to compile it, it would actually uh, return me an error that environment spacing undefined because spacing is defined by this package. So I have to actually import it first. So uh, go to the preamble. You can do use package, set space. And then if you compile it now, it should work. And you can see that inside that particular environment, which is uh, this environment, you can see that the paragraph has huge gaps because the spacing is 2.5 and then I can reduce it like say just two, which is double spacing. And then you can see that uh, it would has the, you, you can see that the spacing are decreased. Yep, so uh, if so if anyone is interested, like, uh, how, like how we say in the chat that line breaking in LaTeX is really, really complicated. Uh, and LaTeX, yeah, LaTeX adjusts a lot of things. So like if you are into like typography, I think you would find LaTeX really, really pleasing because they do more complicated stuff as compared to like if you just write your document in Word. Another thing to notice in LaTeX is that it's old. So it doesn't have some, well, of the new thing. It's kind of like quirk of LaTeX stuff. For example, if I, want to quote uh, phrases or words. So for example, one or several, and I want to quote them in, uh, 
I want to use this code and I compile it, you will see that actually one or several is being is is actually you, you can see that the code marks are wrong because they all are facing the same way. So uh, if you use if you want it to actually be done correctly, you have to actually manually specify, which is uh, you put two uh, back ticks in the beginning and then use two uh, single quote marks at the end, and then it should do it correctly. So if I change this to two back ticks and then two uh, quote marks, and I recompile this, and you can see that it's finally correct, which is like this sign in the beginning and that sign at the end. So these things must be done uh, manually. And even if it's just a single mark, it's still the same thing. So if, you, if I do this, then it would turn into like just one quote mark. And if you just use this, then it would probably look wrong because it's pointed the same way, which is not supposed to be the case. So just something to keep in mind uh, when you're typesetting a LaTeX document. So right now we have some paragraphs here, but uh, right now they're all just justified, right? You can see that here they're justified. It, it doesn't do like the whole ragged thing, but uh, you can change this behavior by using like the paragraph alignment commands. So for example, if you want the paragraph to be centered, you can use centering. So say I put it here and I run it. I can see that everything will become centered after that. And notice that this is similar to font size that it applies to everything in scope. So in case you don't want this to apply to every single thing, you can create a new scope by using the braces. So if I put these spaces here, centering there, and then recompile this, then it only applies to that paragraph instead of everything. Okay, let's do. Okay, but yeah, you, you can you can try out some of these things. So, uh, if instead of centering, I use ragged right, for example. Okay, the reason why it's called ragged right is because it lets the right part to get ragged instead of justified, uh, which is why like in in word you would call it left justified because you justify on the left. But on the other hand, this means that the right side can be ragged, and if you want it to be right justified, then the left can be ragged, and Instead of doing this, you can also use environments. So like there's the flash left environment, flash right environment, and center environment. So uh, yeah, it doesn't quite work if you try to create a new scope, but you can just use this environment. So if I just want this particular paragraph to get centered, I can use center environment. So just its own, uh, oops, center. So if I just put uh, this paragraph only inside the center, then uh, that only that particular paragraph would get center and not the rest. And if I move the end of the center into like some other, oops, some other, yep, let's put it here. Then it would keep on continuing until the end of that particular uh, environment. Okay. Uh, And the next part would be indentation. So, uh, okay, I'm just gonna copy paste this just to give some example. Okay, uh, let's not use center, let's just use the default thing. Okay, so let's say you have a text now and it because of like some long paragraphs, you notice that actually uh, the first paragraph after a section title is not indented and it's only the second paragraph onwards that are indented. And this actually an Anglo-American uh, convention where you don't indent the first paragraph in a section. But, uh, and you can actually control the length of the indents. So uh, by using this thing, so the default, length is 15 point, but you can change it to say, for example, you want it to be one centimeter, which is much larger than default. So uh, you you should put it inside your preamble, which is like you want to do un, like uh, 
for things that are not related to the content content directly. So it's set length of part indent to be one cm. Then when you recompile the document, you can see that it's moved further in, which is one centimeter there. Or you can make it like really, really small, like 0 0.01 centimeter. And then it will actually do whatever you ask it to do, which looks like nothing but 0 0.1, just to make a point. Yeah, you can see that it moves. And if you don't like the existing uh, Anglo-American publishing standard of having the first section of, uh, the first paragraph of each section not indented, you can, there's a package that would do that for you, which is called uh, indent first. So if you just import a package, use package indent first, and then you compile it, then you can see that actually now the first paragraph is also indented. If you want to force indent and non indented paragraph, you can use this command called indent. And if you have an indented paragraph and you want to force it to be non indented, then you can use no indent. So, uh, okay, let's go back to our original example where the first paragraph in each section is not indented, right? And then you want to force it to indent, but you don't want it to apply to every single paragraph in the document. Then you can uh, do, you can use the command indent, then it will actually indent that. Come on. Oh. Hmm. Okay, let's see. No indent. Indent. Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure why this one is not working, but the not indent part is working. So if you want this part to not be indented, then uh, you can use no indent and it should uh not indent that part. Hmm. That's weird. Okay, yeah, but anyway, uh, I'm sure if you need to do it, you can just uh, Google it and someone would have answered it in a Stack Overflow somewhere. And then uh, if you use zero indentation, so uh, it is definitely possible for you to just like set length of part indent to be zero. Then this would make everything just flush, right? And because of this, like, you know, nothing look clear, looks clear, then you can use parse skip package, which would then add uh, skips to uh, between each paragraph. So if I use package parse skip, I run it, and you can see that it would add uh, skips to each paragraph. But uh, I think if you are not too particular about uh, the layout of your document, LaTeX should provide uh, good enough uh, things for you to use so such that you don't have to actually uh, resort to like these things like, you know, uh, like fiddling with the paragraph parameters. And then uh, sometimes you actually want to uh, provide code, for example, uh, and you want every, you want LaTeX to not mess with any like spaces then you can introduce text that the compiler will actually like uh, put as is in a document in a monospace font by using the verbatim environment. So if I copy paste this and uh, put it in a document, so let's say I put it after this section here. Yep. So if I run it, okay, compile. And then, yep, you can see that uh, whatever is inside of a retim is actually being put right here exactly as it is. So uh, this is typically useful when you want to uh, give like source code or like uh, some kind of ASCII art. Uh, it will be quite useful there. And then uh, there's also a package called Hyperref, which would provide you with uh, typesetting URL. So uh, if you notice inside uh, inside the slides, I have some URL where you can just click and it would, uh, like for example, this one, you can see that it's actually a link that I can click and it will open my browser. Uh, 
So in order to do that, I actually use this package called hyperref, which is for type setting URLs. So if I just use this package, so use package hyperref. And then uh, I have this, I, I didn't have this uh, new command called URL. So uh, for example, I have this thing and I'm just like, you know, go to our website at, and then I can put this thing. And then if you compile this, then it should actually uh, uh, give you a hyperlink that you can click and it will like open the website. So in this case, my website is on another window, but it, the action should be kind of similar. So when you click it, it would open your website. And the default way they are being rendered here is by putting like this ugly rectangle around. So in case you don't like that, uh, when you import you uh, when you import hyperref, you can use uh, the option color links. So if I do that here, then I compile it. You can see that instead of uh, putting a box around it, it changes it into like coloring it differently. And you can uh, go search online if you want to use different colors for uh, the links because uh, hyperref would differentiate what kind of color you want based on like where it's going, whether it's in the internet or whether it's a link to uh, uh, the same document. So for example, uh, if you notice here, you can also use hyperref to actually create links uh, inside the same document, which is uh, what's happening in the slides. Okay, uh, if everything's okay, I guess I'm just gonna have like a quick one minute break. And if you have any question, just uh, feel free to write in the chat. Or you can unmute yourself and uh, ask your question as well. Okay. Why choose LaTeX over Markdown? <laughs> uh, LaTeX typesets everything for you. So uh, it's a more advanced format. Markdown is literally just like for taking notes down, kind of. I mean, like you just write content and it would, how it gets rendered doesn't really matter. So if you use different things to render it, you use Pandoc, you use this provider, that provider, use GitHub you would get like different rendering every time, but the whole point of LaTeX, which is one of the goals is for you to uh, get a consistent rendering everywhere. So that would probably be like one reason you want to choose LaTeX. Another thing is that uh, LaTeX has like, for example, like earlier we were discussing about like how line breaking works in LaTeX and those are actually quite complicated. They have like some algorithm, some kind of weight Thing of like how and where they would break or even if they should, if they can break a word. And that would make your document look more professional. or according to Professor Papadimitriou, every time I read a LaTeX document, I think, wow, this must be correct. I mean, it looks professional. That's like one big advantage you're getting from uh, using LaTeX. That would probably be like my biggest reason uh, why I would use LaTeX. So for example, if I'm writing a report or something like that, I would actually just use LaTeX. Okay, so I'll continue now. The next interesting part will be mathematics. So actually one of the reasons why Nath wanted to develop tech was to actually be able to create like a professional rendering of mathematical formula. So 
it's actually one of LaTeX's greatest strengths. So actually, if you use Word and use like the formula option, there are actually many of the, uh, like some of the recent syntax additions are actually influenced by LaTeX because uh, LaTeX is basically how you would typeset mathematical formula. So even when you go to Stack Overflow, they would, and you see some uh, like mathematical equation, actually they use uh, LaTeX's uh, syntax of mathematical formula in order to do that. So usually as opposed to just using plain LaTeX, I would actually import this package called math tools, which provides like some additional things. So uh, yeah, feel free to just like put it there if you're typesetting mathematical equations. So LaTeX provides displayed equation environment, which means that the formula will be on a line by themselves. So it's called display math, or you can use the shorthand, which is like backslash and then a bracket. So for example, if I do this and then I put it, okay, somewhere here, for example, and I compile it, then you can see that it appears on line by itself. And there's actually a, uh, and if you want to get automatically numbered equations, so you can use the equation environment. So I don't think there's a shorthand for that. So let's just do equation, oops. And equation, boom. Then if I compile this, then you can see that it would actually automatically add numbers to it. So if I have a second uh, equation here, then it would actually number the second one as two. Yep, which is here, which shows up below. And you can see here, uh, oh, as, as a note, please don't use double dollar. So if you see a, like some snippet, somebody uses double dollars, please don't use it because it, it's actually a tax syntax instead of a LaTeX syntax. So it's an older thing. It's considered obsolete and not officially supported. You would get like a couple of weird things using it. And there's another thing called inline formula. So uh, it's, you can also get it by using the math environment or usually like more typically people would actually just use a shorthand, which is either like a single dollar or you can use uh, the shorthand like backslash uh, parenthesis. So if I do this instead, so say I put it here, then it actually just works in line. So like if I want to define some mathematical equation in line, then you can see here that actually they just get rendered straight away in line. And this also works, for example, even if you're using Markdown, it's kind of useful to know about this. So like, for example, there's this tool called, uh, there's this website called hackmd.io hackmd where you can write notes. Uh, you can write notes using, uh, using Markdown, right? And one thing is that you can actually write mathematical equation using the inline formula. So I can still do the same thing, I pi, oops, pi, plus one equals to zero, and it will actually render it. So even when you're using Markdown, like some syntax allows you to actually uh, write mathematical equations using LaTeX uh, mathematical formula syntax. So uh, there's, if you're wondering how to display, like, I mean, pi is obvious, you use like uh, backslash pi, for example, right? But there are some, sometimes that you don't know what kind of symbol to use. So uh, there are a couple of good sources. One is uh, this Wikibooks link. Uh, so they provide like, um, hmm. yep. So they provide like a couple of like mathematical symbols say that as you can see here, there's quite a lot of them. And I think it's good if you know what you're looking for at least what category you're looking for. But if you don't know, then there's this very nice website called uh, this Detaxify, which allows you to draw the symbol and then it will actually guess for you like what kind of symbol you want. So for example, uh, I want to know uh, what, how do I get this? And actually the one I want is actually this one, which is top or say like, I want the bottom one. So. If I do this, then yeah, they will tell me, oh, it's BOT, for example. So like you can actually just 
draw here and like it would actually tell itself so, uh, what is for like the time sign, like five times two. There's actually like a couple of things or you want, uh, oops, say lambda. Yeah, I would say lambda or whatever. So uh, it's, it's quite a nice thing to use to find out. But there's also this app called mathpix.com, which is also quite nice that you can actually use. Uh, uh, the way the app works is uh, once you install it, you can use you can use it as kind of like a screen snipping tool. And then uh, you just point it to the document that you want. You snip it, and then it would actually tell you what is the math formula for that in LaTeX. So just going through some of the basics of the math formula in LaTeX, you can use the caret sign to raise something and underscore to lower. So uh, if more than one expression is raised and lower, then you have to group them using curly braces. So uh, we're just going to go through this together. So if I want to type set this kn plus one equals to n squared plus kn squared minus kn minus one. So uh, let's type set the very first part of this. Okay, let's create a new equation. So the first part is kn plus one. So we that means that we need to lower n plus one. So we need to use underscore and. Uh, because it's n plus one, which is like more than just one thing, one expression, then we have to actually group them using curly braces. So I'll show you what I mean by this. So if I just do k, I want to lower n plus one, and I just do n plus one, and then you compile it, you would notice that LaTeX will actually treat only n as being lowered. So if you want the whole n plus one to be lowered, then you have to actually uh, group them together using curly braces. So if I do this instead, then we can see that whole n plus one will get lowered. Oops. Yep. So k okay, n plus one equals to n squared. So this means that the two is raised. So for, for this, I can do n, then use the caret sign squared. And if I compile this, then you get equals to n squared plus k n squared. So plus k n, that's very easy. Just k underscore n because that's how you lower n. But then you also need squared. How do you do that? Just append it. So if I do this, then I would get k n squared plus k n squared. And notice that this order doesn't matter. So I can actually like put the squared first before the uh, underscore n and it will still work just fine. And the last part is uh, minus k n minus one. Yeah, it's the same thing again, just minus k. And then because it's n minus one, so it's not just one expression, then you have to group them. As opposed to n, which is just like one expression, and two, there's just one expression, and you can, you don't even need to group them. So if I do this, then I get n minus one. Then I can get this whole thing typeset really nicely. We also have uh, fractions here. So uh, for fractions, we use the common frac. Uh, and then um, for the top part and the bottom part, you just like provide it with like its own thing. So like, x squared over y cubed, for example, or if you know, uh, if you want to use binomials, it's also like something called binom, and then uh, this would work. Actually, uh, the easy way for you to explore like how do you typeset some stuff is to use math picks. Uh, so uh, yeah, just install if you want. So they have some, uh, free numbers of attempts that you can use every month or something like that. But basically the way it works is that you just take a screenshot, you can even take OCR and it will actually uh, provide you with like, how do you typeset it? Please don't use the dollar dollar because uh, yeah, that's bad. Don't use it in LaTeX. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool app. You can do that even like, it would recognize even like the dot at the top. At the top. Yep. Next part will be uh, roots. So uh, the format is to use uh, SQRT. And then notice that it has an option and the option would actually be like what appears here. So usually if you want like a uh, square cube, then you can just put like provide three as the additional option. And then whatever comes inside uh, the braces will be like what you want to be the content of the square of, sorry, of the root. You can also have sums and integrals. So uh, there's a difference between uh, how 
these like big symbols arrange themselves because like if you use a sum then there will be something that goes below and something that goes above right same thing with integrals so if you use the inline uh like inline math environment then it would actually show it at the side because if you do it inline then they assume that you don't have usually you don't have like much uh vertical space so to save vertical space they will make it go sideways but if you want to override this, then you can actually like technically you can use backslash limits and it would actually still render it this way. So I'll show you an example. So if I copy paste this in line into here, for example, and I compile it, then you see that it actually goes sideways because there's not much like vertical space. But if you want to, you can force it by putting limits. And then it would actually force it to go above and below, but usually it would look kind of ugly because now it would actually have to take more vertical space as compared to the rest. And this looks kind of ugly. So it's probably not what you want to do. And then, uh, so uh, how we earlier sent a link to uh, different kind of commands to use for wider spaces. So uh, for a small space, you can use backslash comma. So for example, if you write an integral and then you want some space between uh, like what you want to integrate and uh, the differential after that, you can use like uh, backslash comma to provide some space between like the two things. And in order to uh, typeset whatever, goes below and above this like big signs you still use the same thing so use underscore to lower and use uh carrot to raise so there are a couple of other big commands so for example like products uh you have a big cup so cup this is like the set union uh operation or set intersection and sometimes they define like uh they actually define some like for example uh, let's see do i have Okay, never mind. But yeah, uh, so like sometimes they would actually define stuffs as with the uh okay, so uh just just to let you know, actually this book was typeset in LaTeX. So uh yeah, so for example, this big cup is actually also like like this big union is also a big symbol, so it can still use exactly the same thing as you can use for sums and integrals. And yeah, this 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 book is actually type set in a tag. And there's also like a sign infinity, which is like INFTY. And you can easily find out using either like the list of mathematical symbols or you can use the taxify as well. You also have like all sorts of like different kinds of delimiters, brackets, braces. So you have like your typical uh, parentheses, square brackets, braces. You also have like uh, this like single uh, like mod, I guess, or you can have like double of them, which usually you use for like uh, the length of a vector, or you can have this like angle delimiter, or you can have like this thing which den denotes floor or this thing that denotes ceiling and all different things. So like you can just try them out. And sometimes you notice that if I, so, so say for example, I, I want to typeset this, which is like a notation for probability. You notice that when I have something that's kind of tall, everything be everything around it doesn't quite resize. So I have this fraction A squared over B, but you notice that actually it's much taller than like, say like the given and sign or like the parentheses themselves. So you can actually make them automatically sized by using left command. So Right before the delimiters, you put left. So for example, the open brace, uh, sorry, open parenthesis, you put left before that. And at the closing sign, you put right. And whatever is in the middle, you put like backslash middle and then you put the given then sign. So if I use this instead of the second part, that it will be typeset more properly with like everything sizing according to the correct vertical, uh, vertical size. If you have any question, feel free to just uh, ask away in the chat.
Okay, so some exercises, I think I'm just going to give everyone like kind of like 10 minutes to see if you can uh, go and typeset this. And in the meantime, if you have any question, feel free to just ask in the chat or like unmute yourself and pass away. Okay, I'm gonna go through the last one because that seems like the simplest thing. So, uh, okay, so now you notice this uh, symbol, which is a symbol for the set of real numbers. It's actually provided from one of the things imported when you use package math tools. And uh, it's actually, if you're wondering, it's actually a math BBR. Okay, let me show you. So, uh, okay, let's go all the way to the bottom. Let's begin an equation. Okay, it's this thing. So if you do math BBR and then compile it, and then boom, oops. Math BB, is it math BB? Yeah, it is math BB. Hmm. Hmm, why does that not work? Should work. Okay, what happens if it happens instead? Nope. Hmm. Oops. Nope. Hmm. Huh. That's weird. Yeah, let me look this up. Ah, okay, sorry, I, I missed it up. Uh, you need AMS fonts, I think. Okay, let's see if this works. Yep, okay, so sorry. So yeah, this is another package you probably want to if you want, yeah package and response and then you can see that it renders that now okay yep okay so yep okay so if i do that then boom yeah okay so now you have r okay so one thing that you would notice then if i use braces uh directly it wouldn't work so if i compile this you will notice that actually, oh, it doesn't show up at all. And the reason for this is because we use braces in math mode to group uh, expressions together. So, uh, 
So in order for you to actually be able to uh, type set braces, actual braces, then you have to actually escape them. So just put backslash. And then now when you render it, then you should render correctly. And then here, so, okay, let's do this. So X such that X is in the set of positive real numbers. Okay, so if I do this, then boom, you get this. Okay, and then uh, if you just use uh, this middle, uh, like this like pipe thing, I don't really like it because uh, the space there is not really enough. So what I usually use is actually this command called mid. And they would actually provide like a better spacing between them. And then the next part is uh, between negative one and one inclusive. So comma, negative one, and then that sign is less than or equal to x and one. Then when I compile this and boom, we've got this beautifully typeset uh, math. So I think, I guess that the last part is probably the easiest out of the uh, four things that we have here. Okay, if any of you have any questions, feel free to just write to the chat. Okay, I'm gonna uh, go through the first part. So the, this first part is actually the binom is the binomial thing that I went through just now, right? So you can easily just uh, equation. So that's just binom and R. Yep, and then compile this. Boom and R. So that's the first part, and I put equals to. Okay, so this is uh, where it would get a bit quirky. So uh, N, C, R, so N, and then uh, for C, I would just put C, and then R. So this wouldn't quite work because uh, what we want is actually for the N and R to be lowered, right? So it's easy, just put underscore R and underscore N. And then once you, but once you do this, you notice that actually the N has this like weird spacing between C and R. And the reason for this is because actually the lowered n is actually attached to the equal sign, which is why it looks like as if it's like equal n and then cr. But uh, if you want to for the n to actually be uh, like separate from the equal sign, then you should attach the n to nothing, which you can get just by having like this brace sign. So you want to attach the lowered n into nothing. So that's just like brace sign. So if you run this, then boom, the n kind of moved over. So that's the first part, which is equals to, and then you get this fraction, right? So you can do the fraction numerator and denominator. So the denominator is just n bank, right? And then if I compile this, then you can see you have the n bank. The denominator is r bank, I mean, r factorial, n minus r factorial. And then once you do this and boom, you get everything. Uh, nicely. So Alvin binom and R and R yields N R. I mean that's how it's supposed to look like, right? N R. Yep. So that's the first part. And if I put a comma there, and then the next part. So again, it's the same thing, right? It's the N C R. So you should attach the N to to nothing to prevent it. Because like if I don't put this empty brace, then it would be, actually get attached to the comma, and it would again it would look kind of weird again. So you should attach it to nothing just to get a kind of uh, look of like NCR and then, multi and then times. So that X is actually, there's this is common for it, which is times. So 
that gives you something that's different from x, right? That thing times r factorial is equals to n p r. Boom. You get the whole thing types that. Okay, hopefully everyone's following. If you're not, feel free to just ask, uh, just ask something on the chat. Well, there's only two math libraries, Alvin, I loaded, which is math tools and AMS fonts. As long as you've been following and uh, including those, I think you should be fine if you don't do some funky things with uh, your preamble, I think it should look as this. So if you're wondering, actually the font that we're using here is computer modern. So by default, if you use, if you don't specify any font, then uh, the default font that LaTeX uses is actually computer modern. So this is the font that meta, meta font, that tool that uh, I mentioned earlier is actually being used to like create this. So like one of the reasons why North has to create a whole font for it is because he also wants to typeset math. So computer modern also actually typeset. Uh, it has symbols for like a lot of symbols for math. Okay. Uh, so let's go through the second part. So for this part, we are doing a limit and for limit, we actually have a symbol for it backslash lim. So if I do that, then you can see limit showing up. Yep. And then limit then acts a bit kind of similar to how like all other uh, big symbols appear. So I can uh, put something below it by using like just put underscore. So n as n approaches infinity. So n and in this arrow sign, you can easily get using two. So n two infinity and when i run this and boom you get what you want and then for this one uh, we can just use this thing right as the delimiter and inside there's a fraction a n plus one over a n so uh fraction uh below is a n and on top and remember that you need to group the n plus one together you, you can also group the N, but you don't have to because it's just a single symbol. Then once you do this and then boom, you get this. But remember that uh, this thing doesn't appear correctly because uh, you have a fraction inside and you probably want to, have to get some kind of like auto sizing. So what you want to do is you put left here and put right here. So you put left and right on the limiter and that should get them to actually kind of auto resize to fit uh, the correct vertical sizing. So once you do this, and then uh, it's equals to rho. Like this is like the the the, the Greek symbol rho, which is just text slash rho. So tada, you'll get a beautifully typeset math. So it will take some time before you get used to like typing this, but once you do, then you can actually create like really, really, oops, really, really nice, like uh, nice looking math. Uh, formula using this. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's it, right? Oh, there's still the third one. Okay, let's go to the third one. Oops. All right, so for the third one, so uh, here we have uh, differential equations and for this you can actually just typeset them using uh, fractions actually so it's just like any other fraction so the first one is like the second derivative so squared and once you do this you should be able to see boom yep so you see this d squared y dx squared and then uh, plus px dy dx plus px dy dx so then you can see that yep it's being rendered correctly 
the next one is QXY. So plus QXY is equals to FX. FX. And once you put everything, then you should be able to get this uh, thing. Okay, if anyone have any question, like feel free to just like raise your question, like you know, uh, why is why am I using this? Why am I using that? Like, uh, yeah. And if you want some additional resources, you can open this uh, wiki books or Overleaf. So Overleaf has its own like uh, kind of like uh, learning LaTeX, uh, sort of like Wikipedia. So this one is Overleaf's. And there's also one on wiki books. So Overleaf actually like, it has like some uh, introduction and uh, like if you want to go into more details about how to use certain stuffs or how to debug or like check your code or even like, uh, Rata can also be used to automate your bibliographies. So like you can use a format to uh, store your bibliographies and then uh, LaTeX would just type set the correct citation format for you. And there's also the Wikibooks link. So uh, there's a lot of like contents and there's a lot of things that you can uh, explore yourself if you want to get into more details about like how they do stuff or how to generate like say, uh, you know, like theorems or like algorithms like there are probably like different special things for those. No, AMS fonts is uh, for that fancy R sign for real numbers. Yes, a couple of other things. So like, uh, for example, if you want like the set of uh, Zintages, you can do like math bbz. So like for example, like x is in the set of whole num uh, set of integers. Then you can do that, and boom, you get like the fancy z. Row comes by default. Greek like, Greek alphabets comes by default in every uh, like I think even in plain tech, like LaTeX. All right. Uh, yeah. So. If you all don't have any, like, feel free to ask any question if you have them. Uh, if not, then you can. Are there any nice LaTeX templates out there? Uh, sure, there are. I mean, uh, if you're just writing reports, then maybe you don't need them. But for example, like, if you want to write, for example, uh, like resumes, there's like this thing called like DD resume. It's also like awesome CV uh, for like, uh, different kinds of like, okay, so DD resume looks something like this. So this is like a LaTeX template and you can just uh, change and use it. Uh, this is more for like resume stuffs. Yeah, this is like uh, awesome CV. Uh, I mean, these are the two that I know, but like otherwise, like uh, I'm not sure. Maybe how he can chime in if he knows something about um, it. So in general, the journals, I mean, scientific journals, uh, have a lot of, uh, as in, they all have their own LaTeX templates for, um, yeah, their submissions. So, like, um, if you want your, if you like the style of a particular journal, like, uh, I don't know, um, ACM or, uh, Plus or Elsevier or whatever, you can go and look at their journal um submission instructions, and usually they will have a set of um, yeah, they will have their own LaTeX class which can LaTeX, okay, LaTeX class which you can use to, um. Yeah, you can use the LaTeX class and then your, your documents will look exactly like a paper published in that journal. Yeah, so it's basically like the style guide um, for each journal. Yeah, you can go and look up. Um, so that's if you are uh, writing like reports uh, for academic journals. Lah. Um, otherwise, I personally have my own... Uh, LaTeX style uh, class for my own notes, right? Uh, which defines my own fonts and all of that. Um, so if you if you, yeah, if you want to have your own fonts and things like that, then you can always uh, put in some time to develop a class file because once you, yeah, once you develop the class file, then you can just use it like uh, uh, forever. Um, yeah, uh, may I ask how to export the PDF? Okay, so uh, uh, actually, uh, if you use Tech Studio, right, uh, then 
by default, wherever folder you save uh, your tech document to, it will create a PDF in the same folder with the same name. If you use Overleaf, there should be an option to download PDF. Uh, so for example, for my case, uh, I save it in my temporary folder. So let me just click on a new window. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a new. Yep. So uh, if I go to my temporary directory, so I save it with the name document.tech. So it should create a PDF with the same name. So now if I open it, you can see like whatever we just generated. Yep. Uh, otherwise, okay. Uh, just keep the question coming in the chat. But if you, if you, if you're done, then you can just fill in the feedback form. So uh, I'll send the link to the chat. And yeah, today is actually the very last uh event in the Hack the Tool series for this semester. But do join our other events. So this Friday we're gonna have uh, Friday hacks, and we have two speakers. One will speak about researches of AI in the future of travel and tourism, and the second speaker will talk about uh, stream processing with Kafka. And for our hacker school that will happen this Saturday, we're gonna uh, we're, the workshop is gonna be about advanced uh, Git commands. So uh, do follow our Telegram channel. So it's uh, this thing. I'll just copy to the group. So we usually post our events to our Telegram channel as well. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I'll, I'll stay around for a while to answer if anyone have any questions.